Sass. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the What Did He Said podcast, special edition. We're doing a series. It's your boy Chingo Bling, and we got producer Rob in the building. Hey, everybody. They missed you, Rob. I know. And uh, I didn't want to, um, I think people expected some kind of like explanation, like, where the fuck is Rob at, bitch? <laughs> and, um, you know, I, I knew you'd be back, so I didn't want to make it like some like... Well, Rob is working on his own project. This isn't goodbye. It's I'll see you later. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> this is Red Pill Tamales. That's the uh, name we're using right now. And our whole purpose, what we're trying to do is, as many of y'all know, um, I stuck my neck out. I saw that the conversation was too one-sided. Our Latino leaders have only been preaching one side, one strategy. Whether it's Latino actors, comedians, authors, comic writers. And there's not that many of us, but the handful that we do have, your John Leguizamos, have only preached one strategy, one side. And, you know, I kept my mind open. I did my research. And for the purposes of me, my family, my community, my country, I wanted to vote for a candidate that was not going to be pro-China. Uh, I like law and order. I don't like people tearing shit up my neighborhood. Um, and so on, education, climate, uh, there's just war, peace. There's so many things that, you know, the economy, so many things that I had to just roll with Trump, roll with the Republican Party for the first time in my life. So a lot of, a lot of fans, and I'm giving y'all a recap. If you heard episode one, you're already up to speed, but a lot of fans were like, oh man, you've been Republican this whole time. You know, these Texas fools are lame, Ese. And, uh, you know, they've always been, he, this fool been Republican. He He's making fun of us. He was making fun of us all this time. It's like, no, dog. A lot of people that accuse me of being a sellout, not being Mexican, I'm more Mexican than you, cuh. So if you want to have, like, you know, not all of them. I'm, I'm sure some could, are way more Mexican than me. They five-star Mexican. I'm probably like 4.5. You know, pero muchos de estos cabrones, güey, mueven el hocico y perro que ladra no muerde, compadre. So they just have this weird mind-reading thing where they're like, vendido, Trump cut you a check, and it's because you make over 400K. I mean, just all these assumptions. It's because of taxes, and you turn your back on your raza because Kamala and Biden are raza. No, no, they're not. So today, one of the things we want to talk about is uh, is education, and of course, we're gonna jump around and all that. Yeah. Uh, I, I actually just sent out a tweet where I asked people that follow me on Twitter at Chingo Bling. I said, "Hey, can y'all help me compile a list of Latino leaders? You know, comedians, actors, writers, producers, just people in you know that we look up to. You know, let's let's get a list going because I want to ask folks like, okay, why?" Yeah. Why do we look up to these people? Is it just because they're talented artists? We all know that artists tend to be liberal sure. Democrats for the most part. You know, they're very open-minded. These are the folks that are going to go into the inner cities and they'll see potential and they'll gentrify. Now you see the yogas and the, and the coffee shops and, you know, traditionally people that live out in the country are a little bit more, you know, closed and conservative and like to have big families and that. Um, but why do we look up to these uh quote-unquote latino leaders you know is it just because they're funny and they're good actors and they you know they've made movies and they're famous or are they really saying hey guys i know you know me as blah 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 from the hit tv show xyz but um i've done my research and i've talked to different people i kept an open mind and i'm gonna stick my neck out and tell all my constituents because i know y'all look up to us we should keep an open mind and have a more diverse strategy it's just a wiser strategy. I don't know. I'm just throwing it out there. I uh, can't wait to check the responses. Yeah, right. This is a good way to start the podcast. I, and to what you just said, too, is it that we're looking to these specific Latin uh, you know, public figures or celebrities because that they're celebrities and public figures or because their ideas and their approach to policy is a really, you know, concrete, is in a really concrete way or understood? Not really, right? Nah. And also, to go back to how you started it, isn't it funny how ironic that people would call you a culture vulture? Yeah, uh, to me, a culture vulture is uh, somebody that is not of the culture, and they, let's just say Univision. Uh -huh. Univision is owned by the guy who, um, <clears throat> and no disrespect, you know, I'm just telling y'all the facts. Yeah. I'm not calling him a culture vulture, sure. but this is a Jewish dude. I believe he's from Israel, and if I'm not mistaken, but I, but I think he's American, and um, he's the one that took uh, Power Rangers from like Asia, Japan, yeah. somewhere, repackaged it. Genius dude. 
brought it over to America, made a boatload of money. Before that, he was in the business of um, uh, uh, arranging and composing music for cartoons, if I'm not mistaken. Y'all can fact check me. So this is a smart dude, made a lot of money, and then he saw, hey, they don't have a Latino CNN. Like, there is no you know, Univision. And then he created all these radio stations and these broadcasting, all this media conglomerate, but it's a Jewish dude. And, you know, you got your Jorge Ramos and your whoever, Don Cheto, I don't, I don't really watch, but, um, but basically all these people obviously have an agenda, just like all media companies. They're going to lean a certain way, especially because the mainstream media, here's the thing I want to say right here. All right. Because I'm going through it. The mainstream media is so powerful that they have really convinced people that uh, Trump is an orange Hitler and anybody that shows him any kind of love is a Nazi. I literally have people that look like me trying to cancel me calling me a Nazi. They left a comment like, oh, yeah, he got a shave head. I knew it. Motherfucker, <laughs> a Nazi. It's like, boy, I can't wrap my brain around how hypnotized the media has people. Another thing is, it is a hate crime to, a, to physically attack someone for their political views. Except in 2020. Because you see all these Trump people walking around with their flags at these things, or ladies with the little hat, and you got these crazy dudes, I don't know if they're Antifa, or BLM, or what, or just thugs, and they're going around snatching people's hats, you know, taking their flag away, tasing people, and, you know, trying to knock people out. Uh, just a whole bunch of tolerant right violence right. mostly peaceful gathering violence of course, of course so they the ones burning shit these antifa i can't stand antifa and i don't know why biden hasn't denounced antifa but the way i know cholos watch too much cnn <laughs> is they starting to use the word denounced <laughs> they will literally take something i said twist it up misinterpret it and do a whole hour podcast talking about here's the clickbait jingle bling denounces his rasa Okay, show me the part where I denounced my rasa. Show me the part. I don't because you just making you just assigning people an opinion. So anyway, one of my biggest beefs these days is the mainstream media because you know they have way too much power. Even if they find election fraud, even if they find a bunch of crooked stuff, like maybe in the city of Philadelphia, maybe there was a mob boss that had them connects and had his people working and he paid off some folk or they intimidated some folks and some some ballots got, you know, maybe there's a foreign country that had access to the software that was designed to switch votes because they used it in Venezuela when uh, Maduro got elected, talking about Dominion software. Let's just say they find a whole bunch of evidence of election fraud and Americans have to take that red pill where we learn once and for all that our elections have been tampered with for years. Obviously, if you have somebody very charismatic like a Clinton, Obama, or a Reagan, or a Trump, uh, maybe there's not all, all the cheating in the world isn't going to get right. you there. But the mainstream media has the power that after evidence, even if evidence is shown, they have the power to just sweep it under the rug, hide it, make sure you don't see it. And uh, that's the reality of 2020, man. Um, they might actually prove. Because right now, everybody on my Twitter is attacking me. There's no proof, essay. I know. That's all they say. There's no proof. Who is they? Who did who they is say? They? Who essay? found this? Who exactly? What did they find? Hey, our elections are clean, essay. There's no corruption. <laughs> and then, and then they want to take they want to take me and dispose of me. The one that brought you hits, hits after hits of uh, viral moments and, you know, social media gold and, and musical prowess. And, and you know what I'm saying? High serotonin levels. We high on the totem pole. And, uh, and they'll literally just, they're just brainwashed. You know, even after they find some proof, they're going to be like, mm, yeah, nothing to see here. And then Trump's going to have to make the choice of like, all right, everybody still believes I'm full of shit and I cheated. So either I roll with the facts and say, sorry, I don't care what the media says. The truth to the matter is I won. He might have to make the choice to be like, man, but they really don't believe it. So it might end up being worse for the country if I look like I'm the one uh, uh, 
you know, doing a power grab. Yeah, that stole the election. Very unfortunate. Yeah. It's very unfortunate, man. So this series is going to go on to at least, you know, early December, where we're going to cover all of, the, like, the main bullet points of, let's just say policies, for lack of a better word, that you decide that you want to vote on. And I was having a conversation yesterday with, with somebody, and we went back and forth on a lot of this stuff, because, you know, they saw your videos, they're a fan and stuff. And one, the, the did, first, I hurt, did I hurt their feelings? 100%. They're they're like you betrayed me. There's a knife in my back. Chingle bling. That's exactly what you it sounded denounced. like. That's exactly what it sounded like because they started off the whole conversation with, when you got to defend what you say or did this much, something's wrong. So then I, to which I said, what I'm not exactly defending is shit. You defending? I'm educating. Exactly. That was that was the point that mm-hmm. I took, and then we started going down another path. And there's they, a lot of they just to want cover. me. They want me to shut up and 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 basically roll with their narrative and just be quiet and suppress my voice, because if not, it right. looks like. Uh oh, he's in damage control yeah. mode, bitch. Anyway, go on. Yeah, and and there's a lot of things to cover. And when it comes to just the bigger picture of all this, is like you said, it's education. It's let's say so for those that don't know, December eighth. So, so when the election's done, there's a process, obviously, of counting all the votes, picking the electorates. The electorates cast their ballots. If you don't know the electoral college, go look how that works. And then December eighth, all disputes have to be wrapped up. So if there and there've never been this type of this many disputes and these kind of disputes when it comes to picking a president, right? So by the eighth, everything's got to be tied up. The odds that all these lawsuits are done with by the eighth highly unlikely, right? Mm. And then the fourteenth is when all the electorates from all the states go to their capital or wherever they hold a meeting and cast their ballot for the president. Mm-hmm. If that's not tied up, it then goes to the Supreme Court, and then we'll see what happens after that. Inauguration is still going to be January 20th, I think it is. So by then, by the 8th or the 14th, but for sure the 20th, somebody will be president, right? Up to that point, you are going to be covering a lot of different topics, talking about your personal experiences, going back and forth with why one side voted for that guy and why this guy's policies are better than that guy's. And you'll be able to go and do your own research if you want. But if you're going to not do your research and you're just going to talk shit online, we already can't help you there. If you're not going to go yeah. and find your information, wouldn't yeah. you agree? I, I already established, bro, that there are some people that I needed to get rid of. And uh, I finally found a way to get rid of them, which was this. Yeah. The, this has been a blessing in disguise because there are some people that halfway follow, kind of just subscribe, don't really support all yeah. the way. And they just couldn't wait for the moment to say, uh, your music sucked anyway. You were never funny. Your rap career failed. So did your comedy. Uh, you're a failure. You're a loser. Blah 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 blah. You never. I never liked you anyway. You know what? I always did think you was corny from the beginning. I it's thought like, you were corny. Why were you here? <laughs> and I never knew how to get your parasite uh, crabs in a bucket ass, roaching ass from around me. I'd rather have quality people are like. And this is the funny thing. <laughs> you know, it's 2020. When people take screenshots of your followers to compare, they'll literally <laughs> send me two different screenshots. Be like, damn, bro, you dropped 8,000 on on this platform. Or, you know, you still got 1.2 million, so I guess it wasn't that bad. You know, stuff like that. <laughs> Honestly, Chingo, how many followers did you lose? It's like, first of all, those numbers are vanity metrics. Sure. That's vanity metrics. We don't ever put too much weight in that anyway. Because I'm, dude. I come from an era where my website chat room was popping. Like yeah. it was already it was already discussion. It was already debate. It was already back and forth. Like I would literally walk into the office. This is before MySpace. I'd walk into the office. Before MySpace? Before MySpace, bro. I was around. I remember when people were like, man, you gotta get on MySpace. You never you never heard of MySpace? It's like, no, he's like, Pharrell has one. Snoop has one. I'm like, what is it? Anyway. So I had chingobling.com. The discussion was already robust. I'm already used to people getting blocked. People, uh, you know, you got to mute people. Um, I would walk into the office. All my, like, friends, like, uh, artists and DJs and rappers and stuff, that everybody that worked there, people that made CDs and shipped out packages, they're all huddled around a computer just, you know, chiming in, looking at stuff, clicking on girls' pictures. You know, we had a lot of members and I would literally just kind of like peek over their shoulder like, oh, what they mad about today or whatever. <laughs> yeah. And then go in the studio and do what I had to do. Um, I'm already used to this. Uh, sometimes people call like, hey, man, just checking up on y'all, man. You know, you know, don't worry, man. This too shall pass. I'm like, bro, I've been in real storms. I've been in real deal hurricanes. I've had death threats already. Maybe not as many as now from my own people, but I've had them before. 
and uh, th- this ain't this ain't even a, a, a tropical storm in the Gulf, you know. So anyway, uh, I got a little bit off subject, uh, but but the point is, some folks are too far gone. Yeah. Some folks, and I don't know if I should blame the educational system or what. Some people have it so ingrained in them, so close minded that they literally put all of their faith in the mainstream media and the so-called leaders that we have. Mm -hmm. They all fit the same narrative of orange man bad. We haven't had no wars in four years for the first time. We ain't had to worry about ISIS no more. We ain't had to worry about Al-Qaeda no more. Uh, North Korea ain't pointing shit at us. I know somebody's like, oh, (laughs) yeah, they are. (laughs) Because he was being friendly with dictators. Well, the way it is in the real world is sometimes you know how to read people. And in certain situations, you might have to come at it and finesse it. You might have to get on the phone with Kim Jong-un and be like, what's up, baby? What's up, man? What, yeah. what, what, what we got to do? You, 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 you know, congratu- You know what I mean? You might have to tell him, congratulations. Hey, right. what's the weather like over there in North Korea, man? Yeah. You know, they might have to both be like, man, fuck Germany or something. Just to get, just to get on his good side. Show him a little bit of respect because maybe he knows how to read the su- the situation. Like, man, Kim Jong Un just want a little bit of respect. That's this it. is the first president that didn't get us, that didn't get us into a war, dude. In yeah. re- modern history, we're talking the last 40, 50 years, dude. Not to mention, how many experts said there will never be peace in the Middle East? It's impossible. More peace no treaties su- than any other president. Man, peace treaty after peace treaty after peace treaty after peace treaty. Yeah, when Chingo and I were talking at a coffee shop uh, about a week or so ago, and and asked me a little bit about viewpoints of left versus right, and I told him usually what I tell people is, and this is it's a big deal. Like if you really care about climate and the world and global global stability. The first thing I say is, well, if you look at the current administration, there's never been more peace in mm-hmm. the Middle East and around the world. People don't want to hear that, though, bro. Less troops than ever. More but he's the, Hitler. Right. More troops brought home than, than ever before. But, 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 orange man bad. And after that, if you don't get on board of that or can't see why that's such a good thing to at least start looking into this administration or this side, keep the person out of it. Keep whoever's at the helm of the, of the table out of it, just what they're doing then it almost doesn't, it's not worth talking about the education system and your taxes and climate control and everything else because you don't see, if you're talking about I want to take care of the world, that's where we start, right? Wars, troops, if you're not with that, what the fuck is everything else going to be? Yeah, like I can't even start talking about how big of a threat China is. I can't even get to that subject. I can't tell you how all this Greta, uh, AOC, Green New Deal, climate change stuff, there's more to it than what they tell you. It's not as sweet as it seems. Uh, I can't even begin to tell you how these Democrat-run cities. I live in one, by the way. <clears throat> Remember the Harvey money? And most metropolitan cities are. Yeah, so I'll give you an example. All right. New Orleans. Katrina. So, their levees were built to withstand a 100-year storm. In some countries, their leaders... In, the, in, the, in certain cities, they decide to build their levees and their and their dams and their ravines or whatever um, to withstand a 1,000 year storm. So they might have to allocate more funds. They might have to reinforce it, build it better. You know, s- make sure all the resources are there so that it's maintained and it'll withstand a 1,000 year storm. Now, in New Orleans, if I'm not mistaken. It's been Democrat run for the longest, meaning you got, you know, you got mayors and shit and people are crooked. By the way, homeboy went to jail for that Harvey. I mean, um, the Katrina money. So if you build the, 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 the levees around uh, New Orleans to just withstand 100 years, a 100 year storm, and you start to see that that 100 years is around the corner and you got a, a big storm brewing any time, it might be the next year, the year after that. So, yeah, Mother Nature and God had a lot to do with the amount of water they got. But humans uh, decided to what to do with the money. The leadership decided how to build these levees. If we're going to build it like the other countries and shit, like in Holland or something, a thousand year thing. Or we're going to just kind of cut some corners and patch it up for a little while. Uh, you know what I'm saying? So just, you know, look, look at San Francisco, man. Uh, look at, you know, L.A. They got Mayor Garcetti. I love L.A. I love Southern, Southern California. Um, I got a lot of friends and family out there. I might even get a house out there. But I'm not a crazy, I'm not too crazy of a fan 
of how they just let folks put all their tents and shit all on the sidewalk. You know how that happened? So it used to be in L.A., it used to be that if you had your little tent and shit all on the sidewalk and stuff, the cops had the right to come and... All oh, right, they revoked that, right? You couldn't do that anymore. The ACLU came yeah. in. Yeah. The ACLU came in and said, hey, you're violating people's uh, civil liberties right. and stuff, and that's someone's property on city property. And you can't... You, Mr. Police Officer, you can't go over there and tell people to move around and kick them out and throw their shit away. Right. And tell them, hey, man, get the fuck out of here. This is city property. You can't. This is not your house. We on the corner of Vine. You know what I'm saying? And um, so the ACLU and the lawsuits, the lawyers, y'all's leaders came in and made it to where, fuck it. You could you could post up under every single underpass while they're at it. They want to defund the police. They already did. They go murders and crime rate going up when you defund the police. You're not taking it away from. The private communities that have their own private police, like here in Houston, you got was it Spring Valley mm-hmm. and you know your River Oaks, all um, all these people in these little areas where it's like, man, slow down, man. These cops don't play. Yeah. This ain't HPD. Right. This is not Houston Police Department. This is their own shit. So when you defund the police, when you fall for the okie doke, when you fall for the rhetoric of, hey man, you don't need all them guns. Fuck Second Amendment. We gonna take your guns while you at it. Defund the police. That way we could send a social worker if somebody's on Sherm, a PCP, they on that wet, and uh, they, they, they dipping formaldehyde in the fucking, in the joint, and they hitting that hole, and they getting this excited delirium, now they running around butt naked with a knife, <laughs> and you want to send a social worker? Good luck calling 911. Um, you know, in Texas, we really don't call 911. But, uh, but you know what I'm saying? People, our so-called Latino leaders... They don't ever want to touch that. Yeah. They don't ever want to say, th- this is what they want to say. Latinos for Trump is like roaches for raid. Orale. <laughs> Mic drop. <sighs> Man. You know, and everything you just described too, kind of uh, brings everything into a, another bigger picture that I, I kind of look at stuff where these people that, these public servants that everybody votes for, right? Because we all vote for these people to be in certain uh, officiating offices, right? Are just guys and girls who are gonna fuck up it's just another dude who's probably gonna make a stupid decision mm-hmm. and it's up to us to be able to educate ourselves and say do we want this person to be able to fuck up more often or his counterpart who probably fuck up less often they're just human beings it's a yeah. guy a girl and they might have got bullied as kids you know what i'm saying they might want a little bit of payback maybe they're not used to managing so much money right maybe uh, they just want to fill their pockets because of that i mean shit i'm just saying i guess Everyone, all these leaders are, are human. That's why it's important to make sure that we always have systems in place to where, for example, our elections. As we discover that, hey, maybe some of this software really ain't 100% kosher. It ain't all the way A1. Yeah. Like, supposedly that Dominion software, it's not a glitch. It's a feature right. to be able to dial up and dial down and to put votes in a folder and delete and swap votes. And they... People might have to fact check me on this, but I've seen clips where it's like the live vote count on TV, mm-hmm. where it's like the banner at the bottom and you have the talking heads talking. It's right. like, oh, yeah, it looks like Georgia. Da, 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 da. And the votes at the bottom, like Mighty Soul noticed it. She's like, huh, I didn't know votes could go down. Hmm. Like Trump had X amount, Biden had X amount. All of a sudden, Trump's went down in that state and mm-hmm. oh boy, went up. And it's like, how. How do votes, you can go change, your vo- how do votes go away? How do you, how do votes decrease in real time? Like in a minute, how did you make 130,000 votes just swap or whatever, right? Again, fact check me because sometimes these little videos you watch, you never know if they swapped out some audio, if they right. did some editing and right. shit, right? You could, you could probably chop up some stuff. But, um, but yeah, man, shout out to uh, Candace Owens. I know a lot of people are like, She's a fucking pendeja. Don't listen to her. We need to listen to our Latino leaders. Anyway, uh, busted out the book, Candace Owens. Uh, it's called Blackout, How Black America Can Make Its Second Escape from the Democrat Plantation. If you haven't checked her out, follow her on Instagram and check out some of her uh, videos where she talks about like economics and the whole thing about like uh, like these, like the Biden tax plan. It's like, well, we don't make 400K. Fuck them. 
and then she explains you know the, i guess it's like trickle trickle down economics mm-hmm. and all that but um this is the little part about education and uh Anyway, maybe you ever seen her and and uh, I forgot what panel she's on, but her and Ti going at it. Have you seen that? Oh video? yeah, yeah. A killer Mike was yeah, there. Yeah, it was at a revolt. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. If you haven't seen it, I mean, make your own opinion of Ti and her while while you watch it. But it was interesting, you know. Well, I love Ti's music. Yeah, I absolutely love Ti's music, especially motivation. Yeah. Oh no, that's ASAP. ASAP. Man, his shit is jamming. Pretty good actor as well. Now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, T.I. So you got, you have a whole bunch of influence, bro. Hell of an artist. You could probably get a lot more done if you keep the conversation a little bit more open and, and two-sided. Um, obviously, you don't want to catch all them arrows like Ice Cube did. <laughs> Pobrecito Ice Cube. All he wanted to do was help. <laughs> All he wanted to do was help. Boy, man, y'all ain't got no big homies. That's how you know there's a lack of big homies in the hood. Yeah, right. <laughs> People don't know a real big homie when they see one. But yeah, T.I., man, um, I just feel like he's just, he's very emotional and passionate that he refuses to believe. You know, we've been so trained to think that Republican, that's white people. That's for white people. Mm -hmm. They don't care about us. They're not about diversity. They're just about the rich and they're closed minded. And and anybody that sides with them is a sellout, is a coon, Uncle Tom, Vendido, Tio Tom, Malinche, Coconut. Damn. Basically, I've got them all. All of them. All of them. These motherfuckers put coconut gifts (laughs) up under my shit. Uh, You know, but that's what happens, man, when you. You might be some closet Republicans if you can meme that that well. You know what I'm saying? <sighs> right. I don't know. My thing is, when the smoke clears and it's all said and done, it might it might be 10 years from now, it might be 20 years from now, but Latinos are gonna look back, and when they see the trend and the and the onslaught and the the open mindedness, when they're like, "Oh, this is what them Cubans in Florida were talking about. Oh, this is what." Chingo Bling was kind of trying to tell us, like, hey, man, sometimes they make the shit sound cool. Like, orale, BLM, defund the police, do it for Vanessa, like all this stuff. But then they'll use it. They'll use our emotions against us for a shadow agenda. Next thing you know, you ain't got no police. Meanwhile, all the rich people still got theirs. Next thing you know, your kids are stuck in public school. Meanwhile, these Democrat leaders got their kids in private school. You just got hit with the okie doke um y'all fuck around voted for more lockdowns mask mandates mandatory vaccine pro china roll out the red carpet for everybody else america last Uh, and sign a whole bunch of fuck deals put us back in that paris climate accord and all this shit trump tried to fix they're gonna try to get us all back into it as much as i'm gonna love going through all the different bullet points and facts and pull up papers and have links for everybody that's listening to go read themselves i also don't mind getting into some conspiratorial shit as the show goes on oh shit you know like well just like for instance talking about this like you guys voted for the mask mandates and the shut the lockdowns and stuff and one of the points that i hear a lot of people make is that in all these cities a lot of the small business owners are republicans a lot of small businesses are owned by red pill right you know right side people and what the left wants to do is shut them down, make them go out of business, start relying on the government, become more of a socialized type of, and you know, and it goes down that rabbit hole and like, well, that makes sense, right? So when you think about like, why would they want to do that? Think about it. They want the, they want more government control, right? Whereas Republicans are like, nah, smaller government, let us control our, our destiny. Why would the Washington Post, which is owned by Jeff Bezos, who also owns Amazon, why would they be so kind to Antifa in their reports? Why would they, you know, why do they lean a certain way? Why do they promote a certain candidate? Maybe they want the death of retail. Maybe they want to hurt brick and mortar. Maybe it just so happens that's going to help Amazon. Maybe the longer we're in lockdown, it's going to help Amazon. Maybe, you know what I'm saying? Certain um, certain tax, certain candidates, how are they going to treat big tech like Amazon? Well, the Washington Post might just pretty much let you know it's owned by the same guy. If I owned a newspaper, you don't think it's going to say Chingo Bling is the shit? <laughs> Every headline? Big and Tech is an, an, another one, too. Oh, right? man. Section 2, oh, was it 230? I don't know. I, I'm not... Well, I'm not, the, mm-hmm. that gives them the right to, you know, basically not call themselves a publisher, the whole freedom of speech thing. It's really, it's a really, 
it's a difficult thing to break down. But, uh, you know, they're having these hearings with Mark Zuckerberg and Jack Dorsey. And yesterday, man, your Texas boy Ted Cruz went in on Jack Dorsey. Like, these are really, really important videos to watch when it comes to you telling somebody online, like, let's say, Chingo, whoever, it's their platform. They can do whatever they want. Like, it's really way beyond that. It's, an, it's a lot more in-depth than that. Yeah, and to add to that, what Rob is, was talking about, I encourage y'all to look into it. And that's another reason why I felt like I had to vote the way I voted because of free speech and because of our democracy. We've given way too much power to these big platforms and they, they're literally meddling in our elections. People don't see it. They don't see how Twitter suppressing conservative voices um, you know, they deplatforming people, demonetizing people, whether it's Google, who owns YouTube, um, you know, whether it's uh, Facebook, all these, t- whether TikTok, which was like China owned for the longest, um, all these big tech companies with their algorithm, how they're able to pin us against each other, how they're able to, to divide the country, how they're able to fact check the president and censor the White House press secretary, and hide stories. Hunter Biden literally had a motherfucking hard drive that went to the New York Post. The New York, uh, long story how it got there. But anyway, the New York Post got a hold of this hard drive that had all of Hunter Biden's business. Not only him doing like inappropriate shit and... um, Supposedly some underage stuff on there, a whole bunch of crack smoking and, and sex having and prostitutes and all that. That's one thing. But the emails of all the uh, uh, money that was happening, all the money that was being exchanged because he was the vice president's son while he was in office with Obama. And he's going to Ukraine, getting on the board of Burisma. He's, he's got cutting a deal with China. He's getting money from Moscow, uh, the mayor of the, of the Russian uh, or the Moscow mayor, which f- was funneled through Putin. So basically, he's, they're laundering money. They're taking bribes. They're, they're peddling influence. And the New York Post wrote about it. Whose Twitter page got blocked? 100% the New York the Post. The New York motherfucking Post. If you try to tweet about the story, bitch, you getting blocked. You going in suspension. Uh, White House press secretary, she tweeted a link to the New York Post story. Boom, you suspended. Trump tried to tweet about it. Look what's going on over here. Boom. Fact check. Yeah. And they talk about all that. And Jack Dorsey, all his stupid looking like fucking Tom Hanks and Castaway says (laughs) is uh, no, he just kind of fumbles his way around saying the exact same thing, but with different words. And Ted Cruz really caught him up against a wall a few times. And yeah, he was like, would this I'm going to give you some statements. Right. Would you consider that? What did he say? Would you consider Twitter a publisher? And then he's like, what is a publisher? Give him a definition and then reads what it is. And so wouldn't that be considered a public? And it's this whole, you know, merry-go-round. But at the end of the day, this is eventually going to get to where, point it, where, to where it changes. I don't think big tech can continue to do or work the way it works in the way that it alters people's perception of things like the election or really anything else, anything they want without any kind of consequences. It's ridiculous how they, they certain fake hoaxes. Yeah. Like, Trump said drink bleach or he called Nazis fine people. They'll let that shit spread. They let it go. Go, 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 go. Post everybody post. Are they believing it? Yeah, yeah. Keep posting it. Are they believing it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Keep posting it. Go, 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 go. go. His taxes, for example, another one, which is a federal crime to post anything about anybody's taxes, right? Mm -hmm. But you let that go, right? Jack tells Jack Dorsey, he's like, well, in that case, we were letting the things of people saying things about it, not the actual document you know shit like that yeah and they'll tell them do y'all lean left does everybody that works for you lean left could anybody that works at your company possibly throttle shadow ban make people unfollow you what's that what's shadow ban man he's like i don't we don't do that people that are listening right now i know i might sound because look i'm chingle bling the motherfucking tamale king they're probably like bro you know about masa spices and pork (laughs) You know about masa distribution. You know how to weigh a dozen out, eyeball a dozen. You know what I'm you saying? You know about the Mala Yankee candles. All that shit. And they're probably like, Chingo, why should we listen to you and not Edward James Omos? Right. Chingo, why should we listen to you and not Chris Stella? Right. Chingo, why should we listen to you and not John Leguizamo? And so on and so forth. I know I'm probably one of the few people that are talking about, I guess people my color, that are talking about this type of stuff but you should 
I would encourage you, if you love your country, if you love freedom and liberty, then maybe maybe think about that, man. Let it let it let it seep into your subconscious and think about how did we arrive at the point where we gave so much power to these big techs and their algorithms where they keep us in our news bubbles. We only see we're in our echo chamber. We only see what we agree with. You know, John Leguizamo says Latinos for Trump is like roaches for raid. And how that just spreads viral. And it reinforces this idea that you better not go against the Democratic Party. You better not walk off the plantation. We're going to call you a sellout roach for raid. How productive is that? Where did that strategy get us? All these years, we've been voting the same way all these years. Where are we now? We're not even a priority. Like uh, Eva Longoria was like, the Latina female vote helped Biden win. She caught heat for that, by the way. But she had to go apologizing like a motherfucker for that. But, okay, so Latina women helped Biden win. Okay, and y'all ain't bringing up all this stuff like the New York Post story that homeboy red-handed texting and emailing all these people. They're not doctored. They're not Photoshopped because the people on the other end are like, yep, that's my email. Yep, it matches the email I received in my Gmail that came from old boy. And there's all kind of receipts. And the New York Post in 2020 in America is not allowed to get that story out. They're not allowed to tweet for X amount of time. I think they got enough pressure. I even tweeted. I was like, it's October, blah, blah, blah. And the New York Post still uh, isn't isn't allowed to tweet. They like put them in Twitter jail because they want to take this whole Hunter Biden story, this whole Burisma, Ukraine, uh, open FBI investigation into the Biden crime family and sweep it under the rug so y'all could keep focusing on how Trump's a racist, told y'all to drink bleach, and he's a Nazi Hitler, and anybody that dare put on a red hat or follow this dude deserves to get punched in the face. Yeah, There's literally so-called Latino leaders that are perpetuating these ideas. They talk about making lists, and they talk about it's okay to punch a Nazi in the face. And these days, if you voted for Trump, you're considered a Nazi because that's the level of stupid motherfuckers we got in our country. And they forget that prior to Trump running for election, man, didn't nobody say shit about no racist. They're just like, man, he over there with Don King. He kicking it with Oprah. You know, he over there winning awards from the black community. And yeah. He's over there donating to this and giving back to that and building this and building that. And he got casinos and hotels and he licensed his name to some university and they did some fuck shit. But nah, he's the one. He's the one. You know, uh, terms like draining the swamp and crony capitalists and all, all these terms that you might hear thrown around. It's really it's, it's fun. I'm telling you guys, if you just go look into why those terms came to, to, the, to the you know mainstream all of a sudden, it's really interesting. And funny enough, yeah, after that Ted Cruz thing, this was yesterday, Twitter censorship of 2020 presidential uh, campaign from May 31st to yesterday. Wait, wait, wait. Twitter's censorship of the 2020 presidential campaign from May 31st to yesterday. Biden was censored zero times. Trump 194 times. Yeah, and I think that was from Fox is what it looks like. Or maybe uh, C-Max or oh, and, 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 and one of these news stations. That's fucking crazy, right? Basically, anything Trump says, they'll find a way to either make it misogynistic or, you know, racist, homophobic, anti-Islamic, and, uh, anti-Semitic, and so on. But, you know, they name and shit after him in Israel. They're naming streets and stuff after him. <laughs> I mean, he's doing he's doing the quote unquote impossible. They were like Al Qaeda and ISIS will always be a threat. Word bet. <laughs> Ooh, I, I just fucked it up. Did you? Nah. No. I th- hello, hello. I can't hear myself. You can't hear yourself. Yeah, keep going. Pause. Jingo's gonna check the. Uh, he's gonna check the the mic real quick. Yeah, keep talking. Uh, next, I mean, we're gonna eventually everybody segue into education. Yeah, 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 go ahead. No, 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 it's all right. Is, is, can you hear it? Yeah, it's because I did the shh too loud. <laughs> oh, that's fine. Uh, but we don't, we don't have to necessarily. It was just, but I got you down the road of like talking about more conspiratorial sounding things because sometimes within conspiracy theories, you do find nuggets of truth that come to light. And like all this stuff we're talking about, when you start to hear that certain counties or certain states aren't 
going to actually uh, certify their election in their county, you might want start to wonder, well, why, why haven't I heard about this since election day, right? Because we're coming up on that time where you got to start certifying your county, start certifying the, the ballots and the numbers and all that, right? If no certification process takes place, you might want to start wondering why and looking into why are they going to the Supreme Court? Mm. Why? I, CNN said but, it's it's over. Man. President-elect is done. Like, what are we talking about, right? For weeks. Dude, one of the biggest things that really, uh, what's the word, grinds my gears. Yeah, I love it. You know, I'm, I'm 41. I have kids. I'm married. You know, I'm not a little young punk anymore. I'm not 21 at the club drinking Hennessy. You know, I'm over here making sure I'm rested, taking my supplements and working, working out every morning, working, trying to work out, you know, stuff like that. Eat right. Make sure that I have a good relationship with my daughters. But how frustrating is it as an American, as a Latino, as a Mexican-American, as a father, as a husband, that everybody around you is brainwashed. Everybody around you is blind. And whoever, whoever's already been red-pilled, like whoever's already open to conservatism, is already open to the idea that the Democrats aren't perfect, if you're already kind of on this side, I know you feel me. Because there's nothing more frustrating than you knowing that it's technically not over because you already knew that regardless of who won, if they had said Trump won, I already knew it wasn't going to be over. Yeah. I already knew that regardless of what the media said, what the newspaper said, what Jorge Ramos said, what your favorite Latino leader said, I knew that the Supreme Court, I knew it was going to be highly contested. I absolutely knew that. I've grown up in a Democrat-run city. I know all about corruption. I don't ever trust vote counts. I mean, my parents are from Mexico. We know how it works. Yeah. Mordida and shit. You know what I'm saying? Chingo de corrupción. That's why my family came over here. They were just, uh, what's the word, jaded yeah. and frustrated with the, with the so-called system. But it's super frustrated that everybody around you is like, oh, Chingo, just take your L. Take your L. That's so funny. Chingo, take the L. <laughs> oh my God, Chingo. No one cares anymore. Chingo, move on. Take your L. Hold this L. Even my daughter, Mickey, uh, she's 12. And she's like, Dad, everybody on TikTok is just like, Biden won. Move on. It's time for healing. Take the L. Take the <laughs> L. And I was like, Mija, they can say whatever they want to say. You know, they're kids. And, and there's grown adults that think, Biden really won. Yeah. What the fuck does president elect and what is projected winner? It's just the minute you you view the world through the filter that the news ain't all the way real and they don't have your best interest in mind. They have their own interests in mind. They have their own agenda and shit that they are trying to accomplish. This president elect, president of the basement, this uh, <laughs> fake backdrop... I want to do a video where I have a, pay, a podium and a fake uh, background. I don't know what, who's, if it's going to be Juve, pinche president elect, <laughs> uh, el alcalde elect, uh, Vallehermoso Tamaulipas, 18 de marzo. I don't know how I'm going to do it, but I just want to like illustrate. Oh, check this out since we're on the subject. So me and my boy Pee Wee, uh, official young ho on Instagram, <laughs> he's a Vietnam, name. he's Vietnamese American. He, like, grew up, you know, Houston, diverse, so he's blacks, Mexicans, all that. He knows more about corridos than I do. We knocked out a couple TikToks. One of the TikToks was, you know, Chingo Bling at the Mali King has new competition in town. He's, t he's stealing customers. So Joseph goes and buys tamales from him. And he's like, cheap, cheap, cheap. What, you know, what you want? What you want? I got you. I got you. Cheap, cheap, cheap. This one hit different. It hit different. <laughs> and then he says, look, look, this one's fat. I got a little chihuahua inside. Anyway, the, one of the comments was, oh, great. Chingo Bling is not only, you know, a Trump supporter, but he's also anti-Asian. And this perpetuates Asian stereotypes because he made the guy say there's a chihuahua in the tamales. Bro, uh, Young Ho, he he freestyled that. He's funny. He he decided. That's he threw that in hilarious. there. Hilarious. He threw that in there. We kept it in. We kept it moving. It's just a TikTok. We knocked out three other TikToks. I wasn't going to be like, uh, hey, bro, um, I know we're trying to be funny, but this could get misinterpreted as Chingo Bling is racist, anti-Asian, 
perpetuating Asian stereotypes, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, man, people are fucking stupid as shit. And that's all the cussing I'm going to do today. Yeah, so dumb. Say. Yeah, very dumb. Um, I'm just writing down notes. Like I told you, I, there's a lot of things in what you've said that we're going to go through with a fine tooth comb on other episodes. But that hey, was one we, of them. We keep promising people. <laughs> now, we're going to go in depth next time, player. <laughs> We're just setting the landscape right now, right? We're setting the table. Yeah, the first episode was two hours. There's plenty. If you didn't listen to it, go back to it. Get the whole, the whole two, two, two hours. No shit. Chingo was almost late to pick up. <laughs> almost late to pick up my daughter. Uh, you want to get into education? Yes. Yeah, let's, let's All right. Please. So, I, like I was telling Chingo, I, I like that a lot of the first episode and this one and maybe even the next one is all a personal experience, right? You had a really different schooling experience than a lot of people that you may have grown up with, people mm-hmm. that might listen to you, be fans, mm-hmm. family even. And there's obviously a differ, differing uh, way of approaching education when it comes to Trump's administration and what Biden wants to do. So overall, before I even put any kind of question to you, mm-hmm. what was your outlook on education prior to, let's say, a couple months ago? Okay. <clears throat> so just to give you my life story real quick. Um, I went to public Houston Independent School District. I went to uh, South Maid Elementary for like a year. And then uh, that's right there in the hood. If you're in the Southeast, shout out to South Maid. And then I believe in like first grade to fifth, I went to uh, Sanchez Elementary. Also in the hood, right there off 610. What it do? I'm out here. Shout out to Sanchez Elementary. We always give back to um, Thanksgiving's right around the corner. And, and we need to get on it because usually for Thanksgiving, we're going to hook them up. And then for middle school, I started to get bust. For this Vanguard program, which is kind of like a magnet. So sixth grade through eighth grade, I went to Holland Middle School over there off of 610 on the east side by the uh, Budweiser Brewery, Mm -hmm. where it smells like you smell the beer in the air. And it's right over the ship channel. They going towards Deer Park? Over the, yeah, over the port of Houston. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm from the southeast. (laughs) We'd hop on 610, go like east, like north, going up. But anyway, I went to uh, Holland Middle School. That was a Vanguard program. So it was still a hood ass school. It was like, I think mostly black. Mm. And, um, but my little Vanguard program, we had like our own little hallway and we just kind of stayed amongst ourselves for the most part, because that's where all my friends were. And we sat together at lunch and then we went back to class. So this is still mostly like minority kids, but we were like, quote unquote, smart, I guess. So I believe in eighth grade, they, um, this organization called a better chance, probably owned by white liberals. <laughs> It was called ABC, A Better Chance. So they dropped off 15 letters for myself and 14 other students. I read it, and it basically said, hey, um, tell your parents we're going to have this uh, presentation at this school in the auditorium, and it's about ABC, A Better Chance. You guys might have an opportunity, might get accepted, might even get financial aid or a full ride to a prep school. To like an elite East Coast, like Phillips Exeter, uh, Andover, like these famous little like Harvards of high school. Super expensive. All the elite and all the rich want to send their kids there. People from other countries. Like I went to school with like people that were like borderline royalty, like their uncles on the United Nations. and What? Yeah, yeah, like damn near princesses and shit. Just smart, rich people and shit. Um, anyway, so... I got the letter and it says ABC, go to school out of state by myself. I'm in eighth grade. Yeah. What do you mean? (laughs) I'm going to live by myself. So I was like, nah, threw it in my backpack. I asked all my friends, what's up, man? Y'all going? They're like, nope. Hell no. Hell no. Everybody, hell no. (laughs) So my older sister, who's uh, 13 years older than me, Dalila. Start playing the song. Hell no. Hell no. To the no, no. To the no, no, no. Hey, hell no. (laughs) So my older sister, who was always meddling in my business. No, I'm kidding. (laughs) Shout out. Thank you. Shout out to Dalila. uh, Always looking out. So she was old. You know, she's 13 years older. If I'm in eighth grade, look, she graduated high school when I graduated kindergarten. Oh, shit. So if I'm in eighth grade, she's already a grown woman. Yeah. She read the paper and was like, oh, hmm, I want to look into this. So we all go to the presentation we see this white man at a podium with um the clicker and the presentation he's showing these pictures of these manicured lawns they look like universities like these little schools 
and they're explaining they're like we know that latinos are tightly knit and you may not want to let your little one go but this is a really big opportunity he was trying to sell all the parents on how big of a deal this was <clears throat> so i got an application um i didn't fill it out i purposely missed the deadline me se pendejo and long story short the deadline had already passed and my sister's like hey um hey mijo uh, what if it happened to that that thing that application how'd it go did you turn it in what happened i was like oh uh oh look it looks like i missed the deadline <laughs> gonna go play she's like no 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 let me call them see if they'll uh give you an extension or something and it was they were like yeah tell them her, it's still time tell them to hurry and turn it in some of these schools might still accept them i was like fuck so all weekend i'm having to write an essay and fill out all these stupid ass questions I ended up getting accepted to a, a school in North Carolina. It was called Asheville. I, um, they gave me like damn near a full ride at Asheville. And then I got a full ride at Petty, which is where I went, the Petty School in uh, Heightstown, New Jersey. Class of 97, you heard me. And um, I was like, fuck, I got in. What the fuck? What now what? So uh, we went with the one with the full ride. So, bam, all my friends are going to Milby High School or they're going to, like, different magnet vanguard, like law enforcement, criminal justice. Some went to HSPVA, the high school performing visual arts, and so on. And I'm like, fuck, I don't want to go to this shit. So, my, my uh, who went with us the first time? I think the first year was my sister, Pat, who I think was pregnant at the time. And then she's 10 years older than me. And then... um my parents so we get on a plane we land in newark new jersey oh shit shout out joey diaz which is right by new york so we land in newark but the way they say it it sounds like new york right so we're like uh we need to go to heights town new jersey we need to like catch a cab or something they're like yeah well this is newark and i was like no 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 no, no. we're not supposed to be in new york like we need to get there <laughs> we didn't know where the fuck we were yeah People were staring at us at restaurants. They thought we were Filipino or some shit because most people think that Mexicans are only uh, like from Puebla, especially in New York, in that part of the country. Their perception of a Mexican is from like Oaxaca oh. and Puebla. So you're going to be darker and shorter. They thought we were Filipino. So uh, I did four years. I saw my parents drive off and I'm like, what the fuck? When you're eight? No, 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 no. Oh. Ninth grade. Oh, so I'm okay, 13. Okay. Gotcha. I'm 13. Now I got to wash my own drawers. I got to tell myself to do my own homework. And it was culture shock. I wasn't used to blizzards. I wasn't used to snow days. I wasn't used to uh, put a milk crate outside of your uh, window. That's your fridge. That's going to be your freezer. If no you want. Shit. Because you were only allowed. I, I literally had this flashback the other day and I told my daughter. I came in uh, from outside because I had to come back here. And it was chilly. And I had that little memory. And I told my, my 12-year-old, I said, hey, um, I was like, hey, good night. But anyway, uh, you weren't allowed to have a fridge unless you were in the 12th grade. The only exception was if you were, um, what do they call them? A RA, like resident assistant. Okay, yeah. And you were a junior, you could have a fridge. And so all the ninth graders, we would get a milk crate, like a mail crate, hang it out outside of our window, and you could put your milk or whatever you wanted that shit was going to be ice cold. There's going to be a fridge, a freezer. So I wasn't used to that many white people. I wasn't used to the music that they listened to. Like, I remember it was spring. They're all out there throwing Frisbees. Like, everyone's, like, registering and getting ready for their, you know, they're getting settled into their dorm room and their parents are making sure they have all their stuff. And all the music I hear is like, Oh, no, 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 my life is really blind. No, no, no. You remember that song? Yeah, Blind Melon. No, 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 no. And I was like, man, that's just kind of jamming, but I don't know nothing about that, player. <laughs> Give me some little Kiki and some DJ Screw. <laughs> and um, I was a sore thumb. I was the only Mexican besides my boy Paco who was from Mexico, and he was a valedictorian. So he won all the Hispanic awards. Wow. And uh, shout out to my boy Paco, Paco Garay. And, um, but anyway, the, and then I went off to college and shit like that, but it definitely changed the trajectory because I'm not saying like, oh, if I would have went to Milby, you know, I wasn't going to be nothing. No, that's not true because, you know, hell, my sisters went to Milby and 
And we know a whole bunch of successful people from the Southeast that, you know, went to public schools and Yeah, local. people will persevere. Yeah, I mean, it's up to your hustle. Right. There's people that went to Harvard, ain't going to be shit. Right. They ain't got no hustle, no street smarts. But, um, I mean, that's basically it, man. Like, I was literally thrown... I was taking I, I was taken out of my bubble. I was from the southeast in Grand Ole Park, I forty five in Woodridge. I didn't know shit past that stop and go. You know what I'm saying? And maybe going to Mexico with my uh, with my family, but I didn't know shit about nothing. I didn't really interact with a lot of other different cultures and races and ethnicities and backgrounds and religious uh, religions. It was just Mexican Americans. Most of my friends, their parents were from Mexico or something like that. And we were all usually mostly Catholic, and we all usually went to public school, and that was it. You spoke really good English, though, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because my older sisters, you know, I was pretty much bilingual from the jump. Yeah. I don't know if Spanish was my first language, technically, only because, you know, my parents. But I was learning both. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So then after college, so from there you go to college, college. Yeah, Trinity University in San Antonio. I was applying to schools on the east coast i was wanting to apply to schools on the east coast because by then i had did four years in high school all my friends were from that area mostly because they were also like abc kids so here's an interesting thing the kids that i kicked it with mostly at the prep school were also from inner cities also liked hip-hop and because i just felt like we could relate we were all like scholarship kids and we laughed. We liked Martin, not yeah. Seinfeld. These were my friends. And I'm not, a lot of them were super smart and studious, but I asked myself, what percentage of, ah, I bet you're just studying like a nerd or like, <laughs> ah, I bet you got an A like a hoe. You know, what percentage of that was still ingrained in us? And I think back, what if, what if I had a time machine and I said, hey man, maybe, Maybe don't hang with them all the time. Right. Maybe maybe go kick it, get your little study group. You know, what about the little nerd girl from science class? Maybe be her friend. You could could have got a better grade. Yeah, or, see what George and Jerry are doing this week. Yeah, and just learn more like study habits. And and I'm generalizing because a lot of my friends, they were still like my friend Jason. He went on to be a doctor. His mom, Miss Debbie, like helped raise me. Mm -hmm. So for four years, that was like my second mom right you know she made sure that if it was a long weekend it's easter and everybody's leaving campus everyone's going to their family's house little pete little pete and them ain't got t ain't got money to hop on an airplane to go to houston for the weekend you know my mom was a foster parent she she didn't make you know she got her little check from the state mm -hmm. for uh for her volunteer work taking care of kids 24 7 and my dad was a body man he didn't really have a whole bunch of side hustles and he had no stock market, no yeah. 401k. He was just fixing cars, hoping not to get laid off. And so Miss Debbie was like, hey, you know, Jason, ask, ask your friend Pete if he wants to come over here where they were from, like uh, Asbury Park, New Jersey. Neptune. They were from Neptune, New Jersey. <clears throat> you know, see if he wants to come kick it with us because he's going to be on campus by himself. God. Him and the kids from like Korea. Like him and the kids from Germany are the only ones there. The kid from Texas, there was only one other kid from Texas. He was on the swim team. And our swim team was like known because they only raced against college students. And they, we went on to have some Olympians. All our teams sucked except for uh, our swim team. We even had a, a crew, crew team, which is like you fucking row the boat. Oh, right. They tried to recruit me because I was little. <laughs> and they wanted me to be the coxswain. Funny name. <laughs> Which is you're the little guy at the end of the boat that can actually steer and see, while all the stronger dudes that are like rowing, mm. they're facing their back. Their back is facing the where they're headed. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I'm. So I you're back to back. I would have been the guide. Yeah. I'd have been here looking, and uh, I didn't join because I'm like, nah, cause water. <laughs> 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 I can't swim, I can't Swim. I'm from Houston, Nessie. I can't swim, dog. I know I'm like. You probably were like, hey, man, I just wanted a quick No, no, not at all. This is a story story. But I saw, I was like, what is that they're playing? Oh, they're playing lacrosse. What the fuck is lacrosse? Like, they're throwing this little ball around. And they got helmets and football pads, and they, like, damn near tackling each other. I was like, what the fuck? I've never heard of this. The girls, they're playing field hockey. 
what the fuck is field hockey? I heard of hockey. Yeah. Actually, my roommate in the dorm, my freshman year, a dude named Mike Papa. Mike Papa, um, he he got, he didn't make it. He didn't make it all the year. He didn't make it the whole year. And oh. he was actually recruited to be the goalie for the hockey team. So little Mike Papa was my roommate at, uh, at in the dorm. And one day, this motherfucker wasn't all there. <laughs> one day I come home, right, to the dorm. I open my, I use my little key. I get in. Man, this boy, Mike Papa, the hockey player, done rearranged the whole room. All of a sudden, we got bunk beds now. <laughs> he, he, he had some ADD. Uh, my desk is over there. My bed is over there. Like, what's up, Mike? What's going on? He's playing video games. Those, uh, like before Call of Duty, like, was it War? What is the one? The shit Joe Rogan plays. Where it's like, oh, poof. Quake or yeah, Doom. all the Quake yeah. and the other one. But he's playing that where they got to kill uh, Hitler at the end. Okay. Anyway, I'm like, hey, Mike, why why'd you move everything? He's like, oh, hey, so I, I figured uh, since you're from Texas, uh, you probably like the heat more. So I put you over there by the window. You know, it's sunny. I'm like, what? <laughs> all right, Mike, whatever. Cool, man. <laughs> whatever, Mike. Please don't kill me on my sleep. <laughs> Mike done went and rearranged the whole room because I'm from Texas. I, I literally felt like the squirrel from SpongeBob because everybody would look at me and as soon as they'd hear Texas, they're like, did you ride a horse to school? Do y'all like have Cadillacs with bullhorns on they the They really front? think that too. They literally. Funny. And why? Why? Hollywood. Hollywood has been very disrespectful to Texas, bro. <laughs> That's why I got a bone to pick. Very disrespectful to Texas. They, I, there was a movie on the other day and I looked at Mighty Soul. I was like, see that? You, you see how they do us and she's like mm-hmm. you know because she got a texas accent she yeah. tells me a story when she went to new york and she's asking for some directions on the subway and the dude's just like staring at her not giving her the directions finally he's like man well, where are you from and you talk funny he, she's like are you gonna tell me or not yeah where the fuck am i going well now we got matthew mcconaughey down here you know yeah. giving yeah. texas some love yeah yeah teaching them people at school the conservative lessons really i don't know <laughs> he's nah. doing like theater arts and shit i think nah he ain't not nah, he nah, ain't nah. stupid yeah right he's not trying to get completely <laughs> blackballed from hell no nah. like chris pratt didn't they give him a hard time i fucking love chris pratt man that guy stuck to his guns also said look i don't really talk about this kind of stuff but you know do you kind of thing and they immediately took that as oh he's anti you know joe biden he's not telling people to vote he's not riding with biden yeah but you know his fucking super lefty friends did come to his aid mark ruffalo and um robert downey jr they're like hey hey he's a good guy you know let him let him be he's kind of to himself or whatever versus all the other marvel casts that are super vocal about this shit and we were talking about this at the beginning, like the Latinos that might want to take like Latin stars or public figures uh, advice to heart. You know, same thing with these super, super, you know, talking about the Hulk and shit and Iron Man. They're fucking cool actors and stuff, but they're not necessarily the best voices for your political decisions. And they're a lot. If you're riding with Biden, you allowed to. Psh, yes. Yes, queen. Yeah. Go ahead. Yes, queen. More, more power to you. Yes. More power to you. Empress AOC. If you riding with Biden, go. Go. Spread that shit. Tweet that shit. The minute you're like, oh, I think Biden's full of shit. <gasps> Until you're not a Marvel fucking superhero and realize that you have a, a regular job or a small business and then you go woke and then go broke and you're like, shit, probably shouldn't have gone all in. Oh, what, what do you mean? Expand. Go woke. You know, yeah, like yeah, they'll yeah. say like- Like the NBA. Exactly. Like a lot of people that'll just- side with them just so that they don't get you know fucking pummeled in the streets maybe and then they end up losing money from whatever advertisers or what have you which brings me brings me to the goya thing oh yeah yeah i wanted to do this this might be the perfect time to do it and i'll try to run through it as fast as i can because this is supposed to be the education episode <laughs> um when the goya boycott started because the ceo of Goya was asked to be at the White House. They were, I don't know if they had a committee, some kind of like, it was a Hispanic initiative, something, something with the White House, right? It had to do with Trump and Goya. So the Goya CEO, Robert, I forget, I can't pronounce his last name, Umani or something like that. Mm -hmm. It's it's a privately owned company. It's family owned. They, they're they Spanish immigrants who I think lived in Puerto Rico for a while and they brought the company to America. Well, he said, Donald Trump, I'm paraphrasing, Donald Trump is a builder, he's a leader. Uh, when my family came to this country, they were also builders, and we need a leader, and we're blessed to have a leader that has vision and wants to build things, and something like that. Mm -hmm. They jumped on his ass. Uh, Chrissy Teigen, 
and her what's her boyfriend's name don lemon <laughs> um they they were like oh, that's it we're throwing out all goya seasonings products beans and habichuelas we're throwing away everything do not eat garbanzos if they're from goya come on in wait what's up joe what up man what time is it it's time already damn son Damn, once we go, we go. Yeah, give me a second. Make yourself comfortable. Do what you got to do. We got to make some TikToks after this. Um, So, Chrissy Teigen and all these people jumped on Goya, talking about cancel Goya, cancel Goya. I, my calculation was I need to invest in Goya. Regardless of left, right, or politics, it was really a money decision in this case. Like, it could have, I wanted to support them, but also... I felt like the boycott wasn't going to help them. Yeah. Here's my reasoning. Well, when I went to buy it, I couldn't because they weren't public. They weren't publicly traded. It was private. My reasoning was this. The Karens, they like the white liberal women, they want to be offended on behalf of others mm -hmm. who would like to participate in a boycott. They cannot participate in a boycott because they never bought you're not really a Goya customer. Right. So in this case, Karen, there really ain't shit you could do. You're not going to hurt their bottom line. All right. What percentage of Goya sales come from Caribbean Latinos, uh, Puerto Ricans and Cubans? Um, I know Cubans for the most part are Republican. I'm not 100% sure about Puerto Ricans. But let's just say that 40% mm, comes from uh, of their sales comes from uh, Caribbean Latinos. They vote Republican for the most part. It's not going to affect the sales. So in my head, I'm running a tally. Liberal white women can't boycott some shit. They didn't know what, what it was a week ago. Right. Caribbean Latinos don't give a fuck. Mexican Americans, who might be mostly Democrat, well, I feel that for the most part, we have a variety of products that we buy. And Goya might be a, a chunk, but I don't know how many moms and nannies and Latinas and like Luisa and, you know, my mom and my tias... I don't know how many of them pay attention to this bullshit. I don't know how many of them follow Chrissy Teigen. Yeah. They're going to be like, wait, 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 what? So, okay, so run this back. So the CEO of Goya, who I, I never even heard of, I just buy the fucking beans. So he was invited to the White House. Okay, bet. And Trump was there. Okay, he said some nice things about Trump. Okay, cool. So you're telling me I need to throw away my beans. <laughs> I need to throw away my beans, mijo? Is that what you're telling me? I knew that shit wasn't going to stick. Pretty much every which, and I also factored in how many conservative right people were going to say, this man deserves to have the freedom of speech. This man deserves to have his political views. We cannot penalize this company, which are technically founded by immigrants. I thought y'all were pro-immigrant, but it's only, only when they agree with you. All of a sudden, y'all ready to dispose of Goya? Y'all ready to dispose of a company that gave back millions of pounds of food for people in need, whether Hurricane, whether uh, uh, San Hurricane Sandy in New York, or whether it was um, the quarantine and the lockdown in New York, people needed canned goods. These people helped during Obama. They took the invitation to show up at the White House during pri uh, previous administrations, and... You know, I knew all these conservatives were going to be like, fuck that. I don't even know what Goya is, but I'm finna load up on some Goya. Why? Because this man seems like he loves America and it's not fair to them. Just because Chrissy Teigen, who thinks she got some pool, thinks she really got some influence. Not in my hood. And um, sh that was my calculation. It's like Goya is going to be just fine. And you're right. They were not just fine. They were, they went up in value. And I wish I could have bought stock because I was right. Yeah. I was 100% correct. I remember that night because I was on Twitter like a mug that day. And I'm looking at Chrissy Teigen. I'm looking at all these people. Chingo, we need to cancel Goya, Chingo. You're on the wrong side. You need to get over here with me and John Leguizamo and all these people and Chrissy Teigen and Don Lemon. And we're canceling Goya. Fuck Goya, Chingo. And then they would say this. It's not... They said, it's not cancel culture. It's the free market. We vote with our dollars. We have the right to not support who we don't want to support. <laughs> How did that fucking boycott work out for you, stupid? Damn, y'all's leaders. Y'all's leaders are stupid. Y'all's leaders have not done the math. Chrissy Teigen did not have the pool 
by the way, she deleted like 12,000 tweets one day. But anyway. That's for another episode. That's for a whole other episode. Uh, by the way, Houston is the uh, human trafficking capital of the country, including children. Y'all not ready to talk about that. Y'all not ready to talk about how many people get raped trying to get smuggled into the country. Y'all, don't, y'all not ready to even talk about that. Some of y'all don't even know what a coyote is. But I remember staying up that night doing all the math of why Goya was actually going to go up. And I was right. Next time your gut tells you you're right, you're going to buy that stock. Well, they didn't let me. It was private. Oh, yeah, I yeah, couldn't. Yeah, yeah, that's right. But I was ready to put my money where my mouth was because I, that was my reasoning. Caribbean Latinos, Mexican-Americans, uh, white liberal Karens trying to be offended on behalf of others, and conservatives stepping up to support. Well, we covered a lot in this episode and started with your side of the education uh, like, you know, mm-hmm. perspective. And then the next one we can start with how now that you have kids and your outlook on school choice and, you know, how you want to handle charter well, schools. Well, yeah, let's, let's, how long have we been going? Almost two hours. <laughs> how about before we wrap, let's make sure we put a nice ribbon on it okay. that really talks about education. Because okay. I went off on all these tangents. So all, right. I'm let, I'm all right. So when you hear the opposition say, like, let's say the... Biden administration say that they're opposed to not necessarily just giving more money to public schools, but also want to eliminate maybe the options for your ability to choose how many schools or what kind of schools you can go to. And you have two kids. What do you immediately first think? Or what are your first thoughts about what you want to do when it comes to your kids' schools? Well, someone listening, please fact check me. To my knowledge, the way it works And I'm not an expert on this, but to my knowledge, the way it works is a parent, let's just say in third ward where we're at, via the use of a voucher, has the right to take the money that's assigned to that child to attend a public school. Using a voucher, they can basically transfer that value of that money and say, you know what? I don't want my kid in HISD. I want to send them to this charter school, which I feel holds the teachers more accountable, and they're going to get a a more quality education. If I'm not mistaken, that is the current right and the current rule. Uh, What day is, what's today? Today is, it's Wednesday, November 18th. As of Wednesday, November, oh shit, today's my sister's birthday. I need to call her right now. (laughs) Dalila, give me a second. So (laughs) as of today, if under my understanding, parents are able to use a voucher to take the money allotted for their child to go to uh, like Houston Independent School District public and put them in a charter school. If I'm not mistaken, uh, Biden, the Biden administration is wanting to undo that. Mm. Their argument, the way they sell it door to door to people in the hood, Latinos included, the way they sell it is Trump wants to um, eliminate funding for public schools. Yeah. Trump wants to hurt the public school system. Trump wants to cripple the, the school district. But the way Republicans look at it, conservatives, is this. If you want to talk about systemic inequality, if you want to talk about systemic racism, the number one cause for all of that is teachers' unions. Why? Because they have their power set up to where if a teacher is underperforming, if you have a bad teacher that's not really educating your kids, they're going to keep them in the system and move them around switch schools do what they got to do it's got to be like i forget what it is like a legal like they got to do something really 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 bad to really get fired like mm-hmm. they got to probably pull out a gun at school and say something crazy <laughs> like it's got to be like they fucking broke a crazy law on campus but besides that it's been proven that the public school educational system is subpar um some districts are worse than others um I don't know if these have to be districts in democratically run cities, but the fact of the matter is it could be argued that they don't really want you to get a good education. You're not really getting A1. We underperform whether it comes to like science, math. We're not keeping up with other countries. And education from the time these little kids are in pre-K, kinder, fifth grade, eighth grade, tenth grade, by the time high school hits, A lot of them ain't even tripping over the SAT. A lot of them are not really proficient in reading how they should be. And I know I'm supposed to be like a rapper, comedian and all that. But we talking about some real shit. Now, I'm talking to you as a big homie right now. This isn't like, oh, man, you supposed to be 
being funny right now. No, I'm talking to you as a parent, as a fucking grown ass man. We have to really hold these schools accountable, hold these teachers accountable. And, and if we're going to talk about systemic racism, then we really have to look at that inequality in education because these same Democrats, they got people going door to door telling you Trump is orange man Hitler. They're the same ones that got their kids in private schools. So they're trying to fuck over your kids' education. Meanwhile, they got their kids, they straight, they in private schools. Just like they got their own little private police and their own little private security, and they trying to defund yours. That's whether you the mayor of Chicago or you AOC. So the running theme is don't fall for the okie doke. A lot of times they hit you with some cool rhetoric like, man, Trump is Hitler, bro. We need to punch Nazis in the face. Chingo's a sellout. He's a coconut. He don't know what he's talking about. Remember, Latinos for Trump? Mm-hmm. Roaches for Raid. Got it. Yolanda Saldivar meme. Saw it. Got it. All right. I'm good. I'm all caught up on politics. I know how to vote. Thank you. Thank you, Latino leaders. Thank you, Latino Hollywood, for setting me straight. And we know who to call sellouts and coconuts. But that's how I understand the whole education thing in terms of, um, and that's the uh, that's the page that I had highlighted from Candace Owens. Uh, obviously, her book is more catered to like the black community, but in this particular case, it applies to everybody. Yeah, because it's about public school, those vouchers, the right to a parent's um, what is it, school choice? School choice. And to my knowledge, Biden and the Democrats are trying to undo school choice. Why? Uh, maybe because it's the teachers' unions back the Democrats. Mm. Maybe because the teachers' union, as a big, almost as a um, lobbying group, borderline, they have a lot of political clout, they lean left. I don't know if a lot of these Antifa people are teachers on the side. Right. I, don't know, I don't know, but they have free time. I don't know if they're off. <laughs> I don't know what these Antifa people do for food and, and, and shelter. I don't know if they stay in their mom's basement. I don't know where they work at. With the purple hair and shit. But that's how I understand it. And I don't know if uh, if I'm way off. No, man. And that's something we can actually bring some actual, you know, links to next time. I'll put it in the show notes. I'll put it in the show notes to this one. And then we can discuss it. I'll send them to you so you can read them. Maybe come up with some new ideas or thoughts about it. And then that uh, the document that you have when you talk about what they give you when they go door to door. You can break some of that down. Man. So some organization emailed me. It's like. Save America. It always has a cool name. Yeah. Voto Latino Save America. Some bullshit. And they're like, hey, Chingo, we just want to get the word out about voting. And I'm thinking, really? Is it just get the word out about voting? Or is it you better not fucking vote for who you might think you want to <laughs> vote for, motherfucker? Like some goons. And God damn. Bitch, you better vote this way, ho. So I'm like, yeah, let me see the just send me some materials. I'll take a look at it. All right, they sent me like four attachments, little PDFs. Some are like compare and contrast. One of them, like it goes education, climate, economy. And it's on Spanish, right? Because they wanted me or some shit. I don't know what the fuck they wanted me to do with it. But I'm assuming some people were like, yes, I'm going to go door to door and talk to my comunidad. (laughs) I'm going to go talk to la raza. And like climate, uh, pandemic, all these subjects. And it's a compare and contrast. For one, for Trump, it said, um, ha ha. Yeah, it was like, ha ha ha. Climate. Ha 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 ha. That's what they put for Trump. J A J A. Yes. Ha 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 ha. For Trump. And then on Biden's side, it's like, he wants to get us back into the Paris Climate Accord. And all this stupid shit that sounds cool. Yeah. Paris Climate Accord. That sounds great. Why are we not in that anymore? Pendejo Trump. Pinche trompas. That's why I'm glad Joe landslided your bitch ass. That's why I'm glad you fucking got landslided. Pinche pendejo. Pelos de lote. Sell out coconut. Boot liquor. I don't even know what boot liquor is. <laughs> but they love calling me boot liquor on Twitter. Yeah, damn it. Well, that's that That was a good way to wrap this one up. <laughs> Episode two, Red Pill Tamales. Please give us feedback. We want to know if y'all want three episodes a week, two a week, one a week, at daily. Uh, are they too long? Are they too short? Are we missing some subjects? Do I ramble too much? Um, do you work for Goya? You know, Goya opened up a multi-million dollar facility right here in H-Town, Texas. Nah. Texas being a state that has a more friendly business climate. Yeah. 
Shit, we got Tesla in Austin now. Now we got Tesla over here. We got Joe Rogan over here. We got Chingo Bling over here. And the state is starting to give tax breaks for film production over here. So we about to be the new Hollywood. And we're actually going to lead y'all better. We're not going to lead you the way Babylon did. All that sin and all that shit. I don't know what the fuck they doing over there. But I've been blackballed since the beginning. Um, I know I'm talented. Uh, you know, I know that I know a lot of talent. I know a whole bunch of talent. But you know what Latino Hollywood does? They rather c- cry and complain saying there's not enough roles written for us. It's Hollywood is holding us down. There's not enough roles. Bitch, you supposed to be a boss. You should have been did this. You're not producing enough. This is what happens, Rob. With some of our Latino elite in Hollywood. They like the position they have in the social hierarchy. They like their health insurance. They like their golf membership. They're also actors. They're also competing for this handful of Latino roles. So if you like your spot in the hierarchy, you like being Latino elite, you're competing for these roles, you're an actor, you're not producing, you're not creating roles for others, you're not hiring writers and you're not saying, Orale, we have a new film coming out with, uh, we have Jerry Garcia, you've seen him on HBO. We have uh, Midnight Castillo, very funny, up and coming. We have Javi Luna, he's writing. We have Chingo Bling did a cameo. Uh, we got Eric Rivera, he's originally from New York. You know, we got the Puerto Ricans in there. Uh, uh, we have up and coming artists and rappers. We got we got Snow the Product, she plays a cool thing. We got King Lil G, we got Cap G in it. Uh, uh, the script is amazing, it's going to, no, you don't hear that. That's not happening. That's not a thing because our Latino elite are not creating. Or oh, shout out to Robert Rodriguez. He's a builder. He creates. But these other cats, they like their spot in the social hierarchy. They're just actors. They're not producers. They're fighting for the same handful of roles. And they're just perpetuating a system. So here's what we're going to do. Texas is going to be the new Hollywood. Um, we're going to do some Tyler Perry shit. Shout out to Robert Rodriguez. Shout out to Tesla. We out you. Shout out to Goya. We're going to have Buku Goya in the motherfucking, in the banquet hall. Hey, y'all want all the actors take a break. Come on. Goya just came here. You know, Goya's over here with us now. But, um, you would think, man, the scenario was, oh, we're not worried about these handful of roles that are getting thrown at us like crumbs. We built a bread truck. We got all this new talent signed to this agency. That's not happening, Rob. Yeah. So, you know, maybe that's part of why I have a bone to pick. Not only have they led us astray, but they really ain't even deserve to be leaders. They're just talented. They, they're good at what they do, but they're just workers. They're actors. And they like their role. They like where they're at in the social hierarchy. So they're beholden. We have Hollywood's like, we have you by the nuts. Do you like your golf membership? Do you like your health insurance? You better not get out of line, boy. <laughs> We're Hollywood. Where else you gonna go? Texas. And that's why all their messages are the same. None of them really think for themselves. No, they, they tell can't. you what they believe. Yeah. They can't, they cannot they don't have the nuts. They don't have the fucking wevels to to be say. Orale, hey guys, uh, I know it's been one-sided, but this strategy hasn't gotten us anywhere. We're still, we're actually probably worse than we were before. We're 30 years, politically speaking, behind the black community. We have zero leverage. We vote the same way all the time. We're not even having a discussion with the other side. We're trying to cancel each other for thinking about the other side. And all the while, they're just competing for the same little handful of jobs, crying and complaining, talking about it ain't enough roles. But they're not putting their money where their mouth is. They're too busy buying cars and shit instead of hiring some writers and producing and, and bringing up some new talent so we can have a new wave and a new crop. Nah, they'd rather compete for the handful. And that's where you get the crabs in the bucket syndrome. My name is Chingo Bling, and I approve this motherfucking message. Versace Mariachi drops Black Friday. do 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 He's like, oh, well, I'm going to cut up all the Goya clips and post it and send it to Goya. Adam. Yeah, please do. Shout out to Goya, man. And, 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 and please make that one its own segment where it's like, here was my thinking process. This is why I was going to go buy stock in Goya. Rob, the producer. I'm out. Thank you, brother. Sass.